Now all this talk about translating natural language sentences into quantified sentences in FOL might make us want a kind of strategy or procedure for doing this in a more methodical or step-by-step -step way. And there is such a procedure, and this video is all about that. Now just about the last thing you want to do in the course of creating a translation into FOL is to be staring at an English sentence or a sentence in natural language and not really sure where to begin. And this video is meant to show one technique that doesn't always work but works often enough that allows you to break it down into some simpler steps. So suppose we have the natural language sentence, each dog chases a cat. The first step is to recognize the quantified expressions here of which there are two. One is each dog and the other is a cat. And we already know that these are equivalent with all and some. Now that we have our quantificational terms isolated, we can start translating these in terms of their expressions and use the apparatus of FOL. So we'll say for every x, and then dropping this whole right hand side down here, there exists a y that's a cat and x chases y. Now the only question that remains is how we should link these together. That is to say, what main connective we should drop in here where these ellipses are. And the answer, as we saw in an earlier video, is that universal statements, of which this is one, have a conditional sign as their main connective on the inside. So this will say, then, for everything, if it's a dog, then something is a cat and it chases it. And that's all we needed. So here we've used the step-by-step -step method to break this down into a series of smaller tasks, and then we've put the whole thing together to get our translation. Let's see a couple more examples before we wrap this up. So take the sentence, no tree is taller than every building. Here we can proceed in much the same way. So we'll say, clearly no is a quantificational term, and clearly so is every. Now we know that this no is equivalent with a negation sign plus a quantifier, not sum, or there doesn't exist any. And every over here is just the same as our for all. So we've isolated our two quantificational terms. Now the question is just finding the appropriate predicates and connectives. So we'll say tree, that's fine. Now we have to do something a little bit tricky. We would say for every y, if y is a building, then x is taller than y. So we have to read this as a conditional. And so now all that remains is to fill in these ellipses right in the middle. And we do that with a conjunctive sign. So reading from left to right here, in somewhat stilted logic ease, we can say there doesn't exist an x that is a tree and for every y, if y is a building, then x is taller than y. Here again, we've translated by breaking this down into smaller tasks. Let's consider one final example. We can say anything with no concerns is a cat. Whoops, I've written my a upside down. <laughs> well, I just gave it away there. Okay, anything with no concerns is a cat. So here again, we have our quantificational sign, everything, and another one, no. And this is equivalent with for every, and we know that no is to be translated as there doesn't exist, so not some. And we'll introduce a predicate here, concern of, so that this says that x is a concern of y. And then we know that we'll say anything is a cat, so everything is a cat, just gets us this conditional here. And that's it. There's nothing to fill in in this space right here. Reading from left to right, then, this says that for anything, if there doesn't exist something which is a concern of it, then that thing is a cat. And there you have it. We've broken this down again into a series of steps, translated the steps, and then put them all together to get us our sentences. And that's a pretty straightforward way of doing it. But as I said at the outset, it doesn't always work. And in the next video, we're going to look at a conspicuous example that presents some problems for the step-by-step -step method.